So let's actually look at this machine. So is this picture formal? No. So let's make it formal. So if I want to specify this machine formally, uh, how many pieces do I need to, need to define? Five pieces, because DFAs are defined with five pieces. So what is a simple piece that we can define right now? States. The states, for example. So Q, the set of states, is what set here? So remember, it's a set of states. Okay, so uh, I better write that it's a set because it's a set of states. Uh, what is this set as elements? Q0 and Q1 because they're elements of this set. Super. Um, here's a great exam question. Hint, hint. Can a DFA have zero states? We have one yes, no, anyone got a maybe? One of the least favorite things about being an instructor is when you ask a question, you get a yes, maybe, and a no. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, I love it. Uh, so we got a yes and a no. What is the true answer? No, and why is it no? Ah, uh, it has to have this fourth piece right here. Q0 is an element of the set of states. So does the empty set have an element in it? No, because it ha it's defined to have no element in it. So by saying that Q0 is an element of the set of states, could a DFA have zero states? No. So uh, all DFAs have at least one state. Could they have one state only? Yeah, we could have transitions that go back to the same state if we wanted to. Okay, uh, let's go back to our example. Uh, what is the input alphabet in this case? The only character zero. Could I have defined it to have other stuff in addition? I ignoring the picture. Just ignore the picture. Could I add more characters if I wanted to? Yeah, so as, as long as there's any finite alphabet, uh, we're good. Uh, here's a great question, uh, and there's actually a bit of disconnect between what Sipser says and what is actually mathematically true. Can sigma be uh, empty, have no uh, characters in it? I'll let you think about that, because it's actually a very interesting question. Uh, whereas Q cannot be empty, but... Could sigma be empty? I'll let you think about it. Uh, but this one has zero in it. Uh, let's, so what is the start state in this machine? Well, it's Q0 because it has this uh, incoming label to it. Uh, what is the set of final states here? Just Q1. So it's a set containing Q1 in it. So remember, uh, Q, Sigma, and F are all sets, all of them, all three. So if you're going to write them out, they better be sets, okay? Um, so now let's go on to the business of the transition function. So uh, I'm going to show you a shortcut over just writing the transition function over and over and over. And it's actually using a transition table. And so what a transition table is, is to say uh, the, uh, each row corresponds to a state and each column corresponds to that input. And the entry of a certain row and a certain column corresponds to coming from that state on that symbol. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So let's write a table here like this with two rows because there are two states. Q0 and Q1, and there, how many columns are there? In, in other words, how many symbols are there in the alphabet? Uh, just one. So there's one column, so zero. So what do I put in this box right here? It's going from Q0 on input zero. 
And in what state is that one in this case? Q1. Perfect. And uh, what does the other box have? Q0. And that's all five pieces. So we have completely determined formally what this machine actually does. Oh, by the way, um, when I said total function here, all that means is that the transition uh, table has no holes in it. So there's nothing blank in the transition table. Uh, that's an equivalent lay, way of uh, doing that. But we've specified this machine formally. We've written the states, the input alphabet, what the start state is, what the final state in this case is, and what the transition table actually is.